Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's find the first, the second, the third, and the fourth derivative of these apparently simple looking functions. All right, if we take the first derivative of the sine of x, f prime of x, that is equal to, and this pen is not the best, but, uh, that would be equal to the cosine of x. And let's see if I can find another pen here that writes a little better. All right, if I now take the second derivative, f double prime, of x, well the derivative of cosine is a negative sine, so I get negative sine of x. If I now take the third derivative, f double, uh, triple prime of x, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, I still have a negative sine, so that's minus the cosine of x. And then if I take the fourth derivative of the function x, uh, well I get uh, of the function f, the fourth derivative, that would give me the derivative of cosine is the negative sine, negative times negative gives me positive, sum so back to the original function sine of x. So the fourth derivative of the function sine of x gives me back the sine of x. It's kind of interesting. Let's try this one here. So here we have f prime, the first derivative is equal to, and again I don't have to write of x, that is of the variable x, I can simply write f prime, and so it would be the exponent 7 thirds x to the Exponent minus 1, of course 1 it would be 3 thirds, so 7 thirds minus 3 thirds is 4 thirds. Then I have f double prime, that's equal to 7 over 3 times 4 over 3, x to the 4 thirds minus 1, which is 1 third, which is equal to 28 over 9, x to the 1 third. Now we take the third derivative f triple prime, that is equal to 28 over 9 times 1 over 3, x to the 1 third minus 3 thirds, that's minus 2 thirds, which is equal to 28 over 27, x to the minus 2 thirds. Finally, I have f fourth derivative, that is equal to 28 over 27 times minus 2 over 3 times x to the minus 1 would be minus 5 over 3. Simplifying that, this is equal to minus 56 over 81, x to the minus 5 thirds. And that would then be the fourth derivative of our original function. So you can see that taking the second derivative, taking the third derivative, taking the fourth derivative, a lot of times it's simply taking another derivative. In some cases, things might get quite complicated, especially when we're dealing with quotients and using the quotient rule, and you just repeat that, things can get a little messy and there's a lot of algebraic manipulation that needs to happen. We have a few examples of that coming up. But this is pretty straightforward, that is how we take higher order derivatives.